can see this is Deningus. Dingus. Dementus. Dementus. That's it. Okay. Dingus. Dr. Demento right here. There we go. There we go. All right. Well, if you're new to the Coat Lords channel, thank you for stopping by. I think something like 88% of the people who stop by are not subscribers. So if you are not a subscriber, please hit subscribe. Hit the like button. We always need double-digit likes. And then tell us in the comments. Mm -hmm. Did you like the movie Furiosa? And yes. did your thoughts align with ours, which we are about to share right mm -hmm. now with you? So we, we love to hear what you have to say about it. And uh, we'll try to answer every comment we can. All right. Now, if you're also new to the Cult Lords channel, one of the things that we like to do is have a beverage while we do this and uh dementis what are we having this we week? are having three floyd's bubblegum head straight malt whiskey right. one of my favorite breweries munster indiana my favorite beer of all time zombie dust we we established was a lich king not a zombie but here we go pour it so i didn't know they did oh uh, yeah they started the distillery yeah well, they just call this, it's in Indiana, so they can't call it a bourbon. Right? right. So let's see how bad this bad boy is. Yeah. You All dig right. in. I'll go neat. You tell me what you think. It's good. It's good. 50%. 100 proof. They probably tried really hard to get that in, but 75% barley malt, 22% malted white wheat, and 3% Munich. So it's kind and of like the how same. How long is it aged? It says it's aged right uh, down here. Hand bottled, aged for four years in new oak barrels. But basically, Bubblegum Head is, Zombie Dust is their, it was what I consider the better beer, but Bubblegum is the one you see everywhere. In a lot of places, so they use the same malt mash of bubblegum head to make this. Nice. So well, very good. Cheers, everybody. Seem perfect because these guys have done a lot of different, uh, you know, Road Warrior slash Furiosa slash Fury Road type of um, uh, aesthetics. You know, they always use like zombies, but they also have these great comic books, Alpha King. Kind of fits in the in the. Oh, I didn't know that. So they do comic books too. Well, they, these guys, they in this particular case, they did. There's okay. another one. Okay. It was like a five-part series. Okay. Interesting. Yep. But it kind of fits the uh, the genre here. Okay. Cool, right? Yeah. There's another one up there. Bam. Alpha right. King. But I love these guys. No, I, wish I, they I didn't kept look their... at what you put up in the studio this week. Did, is there any Mad Max uh, no, comics up there? No, I don't have any Mad Max. Okay. I don't have any Mad I just put I up I don't know Chris I Hemworth in the back, a couple of Devil's Highway, mm -hmm. Harlequin, because you've got a female lead, Vampirella, one of my favorites. This weird, looks like a, 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 a guy from the uh, Radiated Abyss. Okay. And then, of course, The Cult, Batman. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have Let's it. Let's go. So, um, one of the things that we like to do before we reveal our scores and then talk about the movie is just kind of get a feel of what the general zeitgeist out there is. What do, what do viewers who've already seen this movie, what do they think of it? So, we usually tend to go to the Rotten Tomato scores. Now, Dane, have you... Yes. Have you... Avoided the Rotten Tomato scores. I beat them off with a rusted chain. All right. What do you think the, the critics gave Furiosa? Hmm. A Mad Max saga. Well, I don't know. I think the critics are going to go low on this. I think they're going to go 65%. 65? Yep. And what do you think the fans... Fans, I'm going to say, is like 92. I think there's a huge difference here. 65 and 92. All right. As of... This taping, because sometimes these and This movie change. just came out last week. We saw it. Yeah. Fresh in the Dolby Atmos yeah. experience. My, Our butts were rumbling. Half the time we were like, oh my God, I yeah. can't like even like talk. I'm... Yeah. All right. The critics gave this a 90%. Oh my God. I thought they were going to go low. Okay. And the fans gave this a 90%. Wow. Is that the first time ever that the two have matched? I think it is. I don't right? know. It's I been, don't know, but I. It's very rare that the critics and the and the fans are so in line. Yeah, they are. And and the movie did just come out, so things might diverge a little right. bit over time. But 
And because of that, I am going to screen Screen print? Yeah. Yeah, but... All right, we got it. All right, so 90 and 90. But let's see what uh, what the cold lords mm-hmm. thought about this. All right. So, Dane, you got your score ready? Secretly, yes. I talked to George Miller just to make sure my score was okay with him. Oh, okay. So this was uh, <laughs> handed to us recently by our accounting firm, Toloit & Douche. Uh, you know, they're out there working bullet town, making sure that everything is... <laughs> You know, Making sure the gas up. reparations, yeah, and the, the gas and the reparations, bullets, and the bullets oh, yeah. are being yeah. properly accounted for for Immortan Joe. Yes, and at the Citadel. All right, on the count of three, Dane, our scores: one, two, or three. Whoa! What? This movie made me mad. Eight point four. A trip to Gas Town. Eight point six. All oh, right. look at this. We're almost. We're pretty close here. It's we kind of are. funny. Yeah, and we're lower than both the critics and the and the audience. Audience, so all right, but we still gave it. This is this is a yeah. solid B. I'm in the B range, B middle range. Yeah, all right. On the count of all three. All right, one, one two, two, three. Yeah. All right. All right. So we we liked it, but yeah. Could have been better, right? Yes, could have been better. Could have been better. Okay. Well, you know what's interesting about this is, and after the the movie, I, I watched a few videos, and uh, one of the videos I watched was from a channel called Heavy Spoilers that I watch, mm. and I learned that this movie has been in has been written and in the mind of George Miller since 1997. Ooh. He wanted to get this thing done around. 2000, 2001, and he originally wanted, he wanted to do Furiosa first, then he was going to do Fury Road. And oh. playing Furiosa, he originally wanted Sigourney Weaver. Oh that was who he wanted. But what wow. happened was, when they started talking about it, 9-11 happened, 2001. Mm. And that put everything on like kind of on hold. Right. Then he went on with other things and this just was put on the back burner until they got, you know, Fury Road out, which was, you know, 15 years later or something right. like that. So Great movie. Yeah. So, so Furiosa in in uh Fury Road is played by Charlize Theron, but in this prequel, they go with somebody a little bit younger, Anna Toy Taylor Joy. Yes, and right. Elia Brown. Oh yeah, it's who plays the even younger. The even younger version. Yeah. And and, and that's one of my a little bit of my beefs here. Mm-hmm. You know, we you see Anya, I'm just not going to repeat the entire name. Anya's walking around doing all ATJ. the stuff. Yeah, ATJ with all of uh, Chris Hemworth and it's like but really a lot of the movie and I don't even maybe it might even be 50% of the movie is the younger actress. Yeah. And they did a cool thing, which I know I don't know if we talked about that, but this is one of those rare movies where they actually used possibly AI and CG to go with the young actor's face and go with the Anya's face and then do this kind of like dialed up morphing as the movie went along. Mm-hmm. And they hadn't done it before. So now they're thinking after this movie, you're going to see this happening a lot more. Well, a lot of people... Um, I read some criticisms who, who didn't like mm. the movie or liked the movie but had some criticisms. And oh, that tape. Yes, our Led Zeppelin. Why can't song. we find tape in the wasteland? Well, a lot of people were saying that they thought the CGI in this was worse yeah. than the original one. And I can agree with that. And a lot of people are saying that is the case because um, in the past there used to be about 50 uh, CGI graphic artists doing like um maybe like 10 to 15 movies at a time Mm -hmm. now for every 50 artists they're doing like 50 at a time oh so they just didn't have they just don't have the time to to, to do because if you think about it with all the streaming channels and all the studios and now other countries are you know like china and south korea and india Mm -hmm. they're putting out top-notch movies too so there is like a shortage of graphic 
designers for CGI. For any Worldwide. of you youngsters watching our channel, yep. that's maybe where you want to go. Possibly. Uh, CGI, joining the crew. The Korean, I mean, I agree with you. The Korean crew has just gone nuts. I mean, yeah. Netflix has like an entire almost subreddit channel of like all Korean movies, mm -hmm. and it's mostly CGI. Mm -hmm. But I, I do, you know, it's interesting. I, I was going to bring that point up too, so you beat me to it. But it was the same thing. A lot of times you kind of felt like you were getting pulled out of the movie because it was like, it seems like this is just total green screen. Like All there's right. something missing here. Like, well, so. so one of the criticisms that I have of this movie, why it do, it's not on par because I I don't know what my score would have been for Fury Road, but it would have been above a nine. When I walked out of the theater, I was like, oh my gosh, that was so amazing! Yeah, right? I agree. So one, there's a couple of things that were different. Number one is the fact that this movie is shot over a 10 to 12 year period. So like, you know, they're building up, you know, the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then how she falls into the hands of Dementis. And then what that relationship looked like for a while. And then she's now in the hands of Joe. You know what I mean? And what does that look like for a while? Then, right. you know, so it just, you know, it was very over a long period of time. Whereas when Fury Road happened, it almost felt like it was in real time. From the time Mad Max you know, really appeared on the scene to the very end. It seemed like everything was happening right. in real time. And so it just seemed like it was a faster pace, a faster pace. Right. And then... And still a great story. Yes. Right. And then I almost wanted to say this to you as because we saw this mm. together yes. in the theater mm -hmm. and we saw it in Dolby Atmos like on Thursday night of its release. But you and I have made a rule that when we walk out of a theater, we don't talk about the movie. So a lot of times we, we walk out and we don't say one word about the movie. We like immediately change the subject to something else. And we walk out and we talk about something else because we don't want to reveal how we feel until this moment when we exactly. get on camera. Right. Yeah. But I wanted to say to you, <laughs> did you notice that in a lot of the scenes where it was the chase scenes and the driving scene, they didn't have the, the music dialed up like they did in Fury Road, they had the drums, they had the music, they had the guitarist yeah, out was, there, you know right. what I mean? And they had this driving music which pumped up your adrenaline. And they didn't use it the same way here. And not until the very end, I kept saying, where's the music? Where's the music? And then at the very end, there was a little bit of music, but it wasn't the yeah. same drive. In fact, the trailer. <laughs> has much more driving you know, music well, yeah, the in the trailer, trailer picked right? All the action scenes, yeah, right. And stuffed it in, right? And to but to your point, I mean, I think maybe where they got caught is in, in that movie. Yeah. The music was so integral to what was going on on screen. Right. It wasn't like a background. It was like the guy with the guitar. Right. All the other stuff yeah. going on, and 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 that's in this movie was a precursor leading up to that. Well, so, yeah. And you know, they kind of hinted at stuff, but I mean, yeah, you're right. They didn't have the. It was almost like, well, Immortan Joe hadn't right. decided, hey, I'm going to bring my electric guitar guy with me and bounce him off the truck. They but didn't I, have I, that yet. I have said this before in other movie reviews, mm -hmm. that music makes a big part of, of raising either your fear of like a scary movie or right. your adrenaline up for an action movie. And when there's not that, that music score or whatever they want to do, you know, like even in like Civil War, I mean, they're playing... De La Soul rap yes. from the night. Mother, I'll tell the truth, so bear my witness. Right? And like and you felt like more engaged because the music's going. So when you don't have music going and you're just relying on the the rumbles of the cars and the, and the people, ah, you know, and all that. And, yeah. I mean, it, that has its place, but you got to have that thematic music to help drive your adrenaline up, in my mm -hmm. opinion. So, yeah, no, um, I mean, I, and it, but it, unfortunately, until you just said that, I really didn't realize that. But in right. hindsight, I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, there was 
very little music in this one. I mean, right. There was nothing that kind of like pulled you in. And, and, and where I thought we were going to go with that a little bit was I kind of thought the Furiosa character was a little on the lackadaisical side. Like, yeah. she wasn't driving the action in a hurry road. Does, she seems more intense uh, as Charlize Theron. Right. Yes, she it's seemed super more intense. intense. I mean, the only scene where I really saw Furiosa taking on like a hardcore role was where she also comes out of the bottom of the uh, war rig. Yeah. And then that whole driving sequence, and you're kind of like, oh, this is where it's kicking in. Mm -hmm. But then you find out she's been hanging out with, how do you pronounce that, Praetorian? Oh, Praetorian. Praetorian Jack. Right. And he's showing her how to do things. So it was almost like a weird buddy picture right. after a while. Yeah. So it kind of like, you know, the, all the original ones had like driving action and like apocalyptic themes. and A lot of Roman know. themes. I mean, obviously they're oh, called yeah. Praetorian which were the elite guards in Rome. Yep. Dementis. I did like that blue. De Dementis sounds like a Latin name, yes. right? And I, I'm sure that is Latin. Dr. Right? Dementis. Right. And uh, the funny thing is they never call him that, but in right. this, he's actually referenced that in the script. He's uh -huh. Dr. Dementis. Dr. Dementis, okay. Like Dr. Dementis. Yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> Up your radio. I can do a top hat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> old weight, old man. Gonna play some weird old weight, old man with a beard. Weird Al Yankovic. We'll put yeah. a picture up of him. The, the, just just so you understand the difference between the two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I kind of thought that was my big critique. Is I felt like she was kind of taking a as a character a back seat. She wasn't driving the action. And Dementis. I mean, it's called Furiosa, but really Dementis. Chris Hemsworth stole the show. Who's got the goods, the bollocks, the testes to ride with Dementus? You know what? And usually, I don't know. I don't know if you've ever seen Chris Hemsworth play um, a a bad guy or a villain. No, but he actually did a really good job in this. I, I thought his yeah. character was yeah. probably the most interesting character, right? Yeah. In this, more, yeah. more more so than Furiosa. I mean, they they gave up. I mean, he had a prosthetic nose, right? They allowed him to pick, you know, certain elements of his style, and then the voice yeah. that made the character because it was kind of talking like this the yeah. whole time, and he said it was modeled after I think his uncle or something like uh, that, and that that was the na very nasally voice. Yeah, he 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 I reminds to be like he was almost like soft spoken, but then evil at the same time. And yeah, he actually reminds me of the actor that is in Flight of the Concord. What's going on? You guys are going to show up to your next gig? Yeah. I can't uh, think of the guy's name. What's it? Yeah. Riss Darby. Yes, Riss yeah. Darby. Yeah. He reminded me, the voice, the voice yes. of Riss Darby a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he you said know, it so. was like his uncle who was like very like nasally and talked like this the whole time. And, yeah. But they gave him a lot of stuff. So in regards to Chris Hemsworth, did you, and I don't know if they, supposedly they didn't mean to do this, but did you pick up on all the Thor references? Uh, I, I I did pick up on one Thor reference, and what was that? that I mean, he a... had the cape. Yeah. The cape. The, he was wearing that white outfit, and then when they shot off the red uh, flare, yeah. and it was all of a sudden it was like red, and he's yeah. he's riding on Thor. Like, remember Thor had the uh, the goats yeah. on his chariot. He had like a Roman chariot. Teeth yeah. grinder, and yeah. what was the other guy? Yeah. The, there the, was that. The, there was there was one thing that happened, and I can't remember what it was that I thought, oh, that I think that was a Thor reference in there, but. Uh, you Supposedly know, I they didn't do that on purpose. I didn't just take kinda, a mental note of it, yeah, which I should have. I mean, so. Grown out beard, obviously mm. he had the beard and handlebar, rowdy hair, mm. chariot. Mm. He didn't have a hammer. Thank God they didn't have him lift a hammer up. <laughs> <laughs> because yes, exactly. Hey, hey there, Furiosa. <laughs> Furiosa, what's going on? Yeah. I mean, but he did an excellent job. I mean, right. God, and actually, I, I, I almost. Would hazard to say that he made the movie. Yeah, right. I mean, yes, he did. Because Anya Taylor Joy was kind of like behind a mask half the time. She was very well, subdued. She almost didn't speak until like the third act is when she finally starts the actress speaking. Herself. Right. Yeah. Furiosa. 
Uh, well, except for as a young girl, but yes. Uh, but it was very mild. little, yeah. very mild. I mean, mm -hmm. and then, like, once she is captured, she just is silent in the cage. She doesn't say anything until, like, almost like the third act. Right. And so, and I, and I saw something where, like, she only had something like 28 lines, like, ATJ. I'm not talking about Furiosa. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about... Anna Taylor Joy yep. only had something like twenty eight lines of dialogue or something like that. And I could believe it. I mean, it yeah. basically turned her into the Mad Max part of this right. whole thing because the right. man, you know, in the last movie, that was kind of our complaint was right. Tom Hardy had like zero lines. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, right. He probably had less. He probably had ten in yeah. the entire movie. But yeah. Charlie Theron took that movie forward because and... Charlie Theron was much more talkative than. Yep. Anna Taylor Joy is so, and and I had read that they had that George Miller had written a script. They had written this script in order for um, Charlize Theron to know how to act in well, Fury Road. So it was already written, right? And they oh, were yeah. supposed to like do them back to back. Yeah, they were. They were actually going to. I mean, it was already written, Furiosa, mm -hmm. and it was going to be filmed first. Like I said, Sigourney Weaver was going to play Furiosa, oh. and this was before. Yep. 9-11. And then, then they were going to go to up to Fury, uh, Fury Road to show how she meets Mad Max, right? Mm -hmm. But then when they finally get around to it, get the budget and everything, they are like, you know, let's just make Fury Road. You know, we'll, we'll just go with Fury Road. Right. And then when that did well, they're like, oh, let's go back. And they, they actually wanted to tell two prequels. So I don't know if... I don't know what the other one was supposed Supposedly to be. Supposedly there's one called Mad Max The Wasteland. Yeah. And, it, right? and it's supposed Out to be, there. yeah, to, and it's going to be Tom Hardy. And like apparently, I think he has already talked to Tom Hardy about doing a prequel to Fury Road. Oh, it's a Mad prequel. Max. It's not an after? No. It's, oh, once again, it's a prequel. Okay. It's, it's to fill in the gaps of like when he was the Road Warrior to up to Furiosa. Oh. Although, didn't he like help Furiosa in the beginning? In which one? Fury Road. Wasn't, like, didn't, I, I thought I remembered a scene where it starts off where he sees an injured woman who had just had her arm ripped off and he, like, saves her or something. And it might be some mm. of a vision that I'm having, but uh, I didn't go back I mean, and look at Fury Road. I mean, because in this one they had a little Easter egg there. Yeah. With him sitting there watching her on the horizon right. going over. And maybe that was... Was that I, maybe I that was the scene? That, I think it's the scene where she's racing away with her arm mm, cut off and, yeah. and all that. Well, there was a point too where she's just walking through the desert with her arm. Like maybe that. that's what it is. So but, and, yeah, and I mean, and maybe that's what it is. Yeah, cause maybe that's I'm. You know. In the original one, in I tell you what, we have. <laughs> I'm sure we've got some some experts out there watching mm -hmm. this. I mean, I'll go back and look at it after we do this review. I'm not going to look it up now, but tell us in the comments. If uh, in Fury Road, there was like a like a precursor to Mad Max, you know, getting involved with the Citadel and, and, and all of that, uh, if he helped Furiosa out. Maybe he didn't. Maybe I'm just shooting. But you know what? <clears throat> I mean, he definitely helped her out in Fury Road when right. they eventually connected to right. each other. But I don't remember. Oh, wait, he got captured in Fury Road. And right. then that right. was the whole premise. Right. right? He escaped right. and then right. jumped in with. Right. The rest of them. I mean, the other thing too in that one, I thought they did a great job with Fury Road. Was you had the uh, the the white guys, and and you know they had like a, you had character development of that. You had Mad Max thrown in there. You had Furiosa thrown in there, and then you also had like you know the brides and there was the some, War Boys. The War Boys, yeah. Yep. I mean, there was a lot of that. And this one, they kind of like brought the War Boys in, and that was the impetus for. Dementis to figure out where to go to find Joe. Right. But yeah, then they, they never him. really did anything. That was it. They just were like in the back background the whole time. Well, yeah. But, you know, they, they did play an integral part. I mean, we didn't see uh, who was the main war boy that was like a character uh, played by Nicholas Holt. Nicholas Holt. I mean, we didn't see him in this. But, right. but I mean, they did play, you know, an integral role. I mean, they were the followers of uh joe and um you know well yeah they'll they'll go to their death and there was a right. scene where you know dementis had shown up because that's the whole thing about uh uh chris hemsworth as dementis i mean he was basically like kind of like 
a nice guy in right. a certain way, but then you find out his backstory is he's got his kids that died, so he's carrying around this teddy bear all the time, but at right. the same time, he's absolutely despicable. When he well, he decides, anyone new? Let's pull them apart with motorcycles. Yeah. Was, that's drawn and cool. Well, he's, he, I like the part where he's like, okay, there's five of you, and we got two extra motorcycles. So, you know, you, you guys are going to have to fight each other, you know what I mean? And, and the top two get to stay with us, so. Right. So, yeah. And then uh, he goes and attacks. So, the uh, Citadel, but it was an interesting um, comparison because you had M. Orton Joan with his war boys, Joe, and then you had Chris Hems, uh, Dementis with his, I don't know what you call those guys, right. the Wild Bunch or whatever. And the both of them were like, I will absolutely die for you. And so right. that whole scene where they're like lifting cars out and right. throwing bombs down and all that. I mean, yeah. You know so. what's interesting is, you know, so, you know, here you got, it says there's like three major settlements out in the wasteland, right? Mm -hmm. There's Gas Town, the Citadel, and Bullet Town, Bullet right? Bullet Town. But, it's you know, I, I'm Bullet sure there's, I, I, I'm sure they'd have other exploration groups looking for other places where they would find this Green Valley, right? Where Furiosa and her family are from. Yeah. And what's a funny about it is that it's like within some some cliffs, right? Like mm -hmm. the green area, they've got giant. If you watch in the beginning, they've got giant windmills on top of these cliffs yeah. that I'm sure could be seen for miles, right? I but mean, yet nobody's ever found it, or maybe people have found it and just never escaped to tell anybody about it. Well, right? I, and and to that point, I think that's. They're trying to hint at how big the expanse is, right. you know, that right. it's so far away that a motor, those four guys that uh, the young Furiosa runs into, they've traveled for miles and then she's trying to yeah, like, it's like two or three days right. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, yeah. that's huge. And I don't know if you can see that on a telescope from the, right. but, and you have to assume they didn't have that kind of technology. Right? right. I mean, and actually on that particular note, there was no electronics, right? It was all just hand, like... Uh, kind of like 1950s, 60s. I don't remember. There was no computers. It was all like mechanics, right? Yeah. I don't know. So I can't think of anything offhand. I mean, but, you've got I mean, freaking you know. windmills, though, generating electricity. And, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah. So. But it was cool. I agree. I mean, it was kind of like one of those things that you're like, <laughs> okay, that looks like a great place. How has nobody seen it? <laughs> right. Well, obviously the four motors or the motorcyclists had gotten there, part of Dementis' team. Right. They killed a horse. They're taking it for food. And then when, you know, their mistake was they took Furiosa, right? And then the whole, I mean, like the two women went after right. Furiosa. Then her mom is one of them. And then her. She went on. <laughs> Whatever you have to do, however long it takes, promise me you'll find your way home. Right. My question is, would they have chased him down like that if they didn't take Furiosa? I, I would I hope they would because now they're going to go back and tell Dementis, oh, we just found this horse in like a green area three days ride from here. You know right. what I mean? Right. So. You still think they would find that? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, well, the other, and know. then I think later, um, Dementis actually was thinking that Joe's area was the green area because mm -hmm. he actually never saw it, mm -hmm. and he didn't know the direction. and And that was a big thing, by the way. Remember, she, uh, young Furiosa, tattooed her arm and like how to find the, star the stars, how yeah. to get to, and then that was the arm she lost. All right. So now, she didn't know where to go. The, here's the question. Although one could assume, by the way, so there were a couple of holes in this movie, but one could assume, by the way, that she's been staring at this thing forever and knows where the stars are. It's like, you can't remember after you <laughs> lose right. your arm where the stars are? So here's the thing. So some people I've read, there's theories, and I don't know if it's confirmed, mm. but do you remember in Fury Road? Yes. When Furiosa has... Um, uh, Max and, and the women with her. Mm -hmm. And she says, hey, I know a place to go where we will be safe. And she goes into this, like, fog. And then she comes up, and she's they're in, like, a swamp area. Yeah. And there's these swamp people, right, moving around. Mm -hmm. And 
a lot of people are saying that that was her home, the green. Yeah. And then that when she got there, they were saying, oh, everybody else has moved on. We've stayed here. But they've moved on further out. You know, I mean, she runs into her like yeah. the, the women, the yeah. elders, and the stuff elders, like that. right? Right. And then Valkyrie, yeah. Remember Valkyrie was yeah. her sister, I think it was. Yeah. In Fury Road, Valkyrie. So it's the same Valkyrie. Okay. So see. So yeah. So I haven't seen Fury Road in a few years. Yeah. So I wish I had seen it right before I did this. Uh, it would. I guess it would have helped fill in a little bit. But I right. mean, that's the beauty is that they actually tried to keep the storyline cohesive like right. they didn't like oh uh, you know even though like george miller has said that there's no timeline officially right. but in this particular case they valkyrie is valkyrie in the right. fury yeah. road and so yeah. there's a lot of tie-in and and you are completely correct that was the same thing i read that that, right. that swamp that was the former green place yeah. that she came from exactly so so let's talk real quick just about how this ends okay yes. so you know, Dementis is, is, he's trying to take over Citadel. Then if he did, he has all three cities basically out on the wasteland reporting to him, right? Yep. So, you know, he, he's gotten Gas Town. He's got Gas Town. And then, and then he secretly, everybody. Yep. he has Bullet Town, right? Which was a big scene. Right. With- how do you Praetorian? Praetorian. Praetorian Jack. The Praetorian guy. And her discover, you know, yeah. run into that. Yeah. Yep. And that's where he gets killed. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and that's where she, she works to, you know, like she uses her sniper skills to try to save him, <clears throat> but like she could have driven off mm-hmm. and gone, you know, to her. And wait, and what you're getting in with that, I yeah. kind of thought that they didn't explore that little relationship enough. I mean, mm-hmm. he was like, became a mentor. He mm-hmm. realized, hey, you really got to go. And that could have been a movie in itself. The yeah. two of them on the road, you know, learning the things road again. and helping out <laughs> each other. The life I love is making music with my friends. And I can't wait to get on the road again. But they completely gloss over the fact, and I was, you know, so Tom Burke, by the way, is in the BBC Three Musketeers, so I love that that particular series. Check it out on the BBC and Amazon Prime. For those of you who have not canceled yours, like me, I caught it before. But anyways, Tom Burke is a great actor, and he, I, I was really, actually was surprised, because he does not show up in the trailer. I right. was surprised to see him in this movie. Right. So, but yeah, I mean, I agree that so, they, they should have shown more of the two of them and right. like how that all worked out. So, so what kind of threw me for a loop was after, you know, she made it back to Citadel and she barely makes it back to Citadel and the little spider hole people pull her in and are they going <laughs> to eat her? Are they going to eat her? Well, I almost think that they, what they want is they want the flies to go after the blood and everything, yeah. and then they eat all the larvae that come uh, out. I think I, I kind of thought that. I mean, okay. it was very, very creepy. But it oh was my God, creepy. Was and that... I was like, oh, and, and she's like, because like as she escapes, she's like, come back. You'll enjoy it here. Well, I'm we'll like, were you, well. were you about to eat her? I mean, and, what, and I mean, basically, like, they want people with yeah. open wounds. Because yeah. then all the flies are like setting their larvae yeah. in there. And it was like, Man, Maybe. I don't know if I would want to exist. <laughs> yeah. No matter well, how anyways, much massaging I get. So, you, by the way, I think that woman, the white-haired woman, mm-hmm. you rec- I know I think it was the white-haired woman from Mandy. Remember uh, that? Remember her? I think it was the same Irish okay. actress. All right. Well, so she makes it back to Citadel and she, you know, she says to one of the war boys, "I am Praetorian Furiosa. I am Furiosa. 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 So they they get her up she goes into the room where with scrotum uh, erectus or whatever his name was. Uh, yes. I love his name. Rictus. Rictus. Rectus. Rictus erectus. <laughs> and then the, the other guy is of Scrotus. Joe. Scrotus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rictus yeah. erectus. And what's the other guy? Scrotus. Scrotus. Yeah, I'm there. Those guys are hilarious. They must have had some other brothers like Testus erectus. And <laughs> anus. Tex- anus. <laughs> anus aflamus. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, it's just hilarious. But anyways, she goes in and she says, hey, Dementis is on his way. Yeah. And so uh, Dementis, uh, or not Dementis, but Joe says, all right, let's let's let let's him think that we're leaving to go to Gastown. Mm-hmm. And we'll trap him, right? right? So they end up winning the battle. Yep. 
And it ends with Furiosa going and grabbing all of the breeders, Joe's wives, and putting them into the truck. Well, it, it, it's Fury Road. That was well, all so people. I know. Okay. So right. I was like, I was not expecting it to go like right into Fury Road like that. Uh, and then they end up with the credits where it shows montages of Fury Road, yeah. right? So were, were you thinking like, because I thought there was still a lot more history of Furiosa doing runs for Joe to lead up to Fury Road, right? Because in Fury Road, I thought there was like more of a history that Furiosa had as you know, driving to gas town and driving to bullet town and getting shipments. And then, so when they're like quickly, we're going right into Fury Road. I was like, Oh, well, I guess there wasn't as much history as I thought with, with well, this. what might've gotten lost a little bit in there is that they, they basically took shots from Fury Road and put it in there. So that's Charlie's Theron. I know. You mean in the little montage? Yeah, in the montage. Yeah, so, yeah, I know well, that. Well, no, my, so what you're getting at is what I thought was you know interesting is that all of a sudden jumped ahead like ten years. Right. But you don't really get that because it went from Anya Taylor Joy to Charlize Theron. So there is an Wait, age jump. All no, of a no, no. I don't. I don't think that's the case. No, are, okay. are you saying? So are you saying for ten years? Something like that. Fury Rosa has had his was. his breeders. Uh, away from him? Well, I mean, how long do you, they showed um, uh, Dementis sitting there with a tree planted in with the nectar, uh, the peach. That's how he died in the end, and then she goes and gives it to them. That there was a huge jump there. I, I there's no a tree doesn't grow that fast. Yeah. Right. I yeah. Mean, remember so she I, cut it, it up and she I'm brought it over here, and they were and, trying to like the circle. So, of life so you're there. saying because like. Because in Fury Road, like, Furiosa still had all of her cred with the War Boys, right? And they thought, oh, we're going to be riding with Furiosa. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're going to be doing this. because she was the, the Imperator or whatever it is. Right. So, but if she had his breeders, unless he doesn't know she has her breeders, they don't really go into that. Well, but she, well remember, she has to establish a law, like, a relationship with them. I mean, she doesn't know them. So, she remember, she brought the peach but, to right. them. That's coming from growing out of the body. It of, still just uh, doesn't make sense to me, like how Furiosa ends with her smuggling them out of there, out of the Citadel, and then suddenly, you know, you jump to Fury Road. She still has cred. She's still running missions for, for Joe, right? No, that was supposed to be like far in the future. That whole sequence at the end was because she. I don't uh, know. Or, I, I, I have, mean, to, I have do, to go watch Fury Road. Do you again. remember? Do you remember how uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dementis is sitting there. You know, and, and we should talk about this. this. Is the very end. I mean, we assume because they showed it on camera because it was the history man was talking. And right. Like all these Mad Max movies, there's always like a narration that right. goes on yeah. by some you know elder. And then in the very end, they thought, well, did she kill him with a knife, or did she drag him through the desert? No shame in hate. It's one of the great forces of nature. That wasn't hope, that was instinct. And then they show you, really, this is what happened, mm. is that she got her revenge on him and she planted the peach pit in right. his body right. and grew an entire tree out of it right. and then used the peach to go and ingratiate okay, herself so with the Okay, so are you saying then she ran missions for 10 years while that peach tree grew yeah and then she went and stole okay that might that might make sense then yeah okay that's how i mean that i mean and to your i mean i, I agree they they were it was very, they were very abrupt with how they all of a sudden like vague. jumped into yeah. suddenly this montage of the ending of right. like which was all these callbacks to fury road okay i might have been confused then a little bit on that timeline and like maybe she actually did run a bunch of missions for Dementis for 10 years while this tree grew. And then all of a sudden she decides, now I'm going to take his breeders and we're going to yeah, hit the road. Her sweet. Okay. Maybe, In maybe a lot that's more ways than one. Yeah. Sweet, sweet revenge. All right. Well, Cut Lord fans, tell us what you think. 
Did you enjoy this movie? Were you in the 90s? Uh, like the both the audience and the But critics? not like the Are, cult lords. We were both in the 80s. We were in the 80s. Or did you have it lower or higher? Tell us what you thought about it down in the comments after you hit subscribe and like. And if we messed up on something, if we are missing out on some key element, let us know. Let us know down yeah. in the comment. Educate us. Because we didn't read the comics. We didn't play the video games. And in both the comics and the video games, there was a lot of lore that was built up before oh, this. So, okay. So people who played the video games and the, read the comics, they knew a lot about this background before going and seeing these movies. So, yeah. All right. So you let us know. Um, and Dane... Or I should say, Dementis. That's right. Where's my motorcycle chariot? Straight from gas I'm going with my rotary engine and my two R18 BMWs. 